Hello everybody and welcome back to Call of Cthulhu. It's been a while since I played this. Which kinda sucks because it's um such a great uh such a great little game so far. Um, we've done a few parts and I played last played this for Halloween. Um it's now halfway through December and yet have had to put out another part but here we are I'm back um, with more Call of Cthulhu yesterday oh look at this they've updated it so that there's no video playing here well we are we are at the Hawkins Mansion we're on chapter 6 um, we just woke up because um, we were taken back from the um, the, I, I don't want to call them the sane asylum, but like the hosp, insane hospital it wasn't really an asylum and it wasn't, I mean, some people were insane. Maybe some people weren't. By the way, we've just woken up. Um, we just finished dying light. Um, and we are, we're getting on track to doing a new playthrough, but of course I haven't forgotten about Call of Cthulhu because you know. I was very excited for this game. I skipped Red Dead Redemption 2 to buy this game, which, by the way, I now have Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, so I got both games. Uh, I'm sorry. <sighs> Who goes there? Oh, she goes there. That nightmare again. Oh. I need a drink. Violated the law. Does it? Do I have a light or two? How do I switch between? Damn it! Oh, I've just burnt out my. There it is. There's my lighter. That's what I want. I want. Did you shut the fuck up down there? I'm looking around. So, I have actually watched a little bit of a playthrough of this. Um, like, not like past where we are, but, well, a little bit. But, um, I've watched a playthrough of this opening, like of this, more or less up to here, a little bit past here. And I actually have missed some things, surprisingly. So, I want to be a little bit more careful in when I go around searching for things, looking for things that might be out of place. Um, there have been a few things I've missed, and I'm wondering if I can kind of go back and maybe get them. I'm not sure if I'll be able to. Yes, that's my sprint. Left trigger is my sprint. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see here. I don't think there's anything on the shelves, no. but, uh... I want to know what Bradley and Dr. Colden have to say about all this. You know what? You don't make the fucking decisions, dude. I do. I make the decisions. Whatever. Let's go. What was that? Oh, that was a cup. So we know that... Uh... We know that Charles Hawkins is still alive. Because... He was a weird Cthulhu-like guy. Cthulhu-like. He was Cthulhu-esque. You're awake, Mr. Pierce. How do you feel? Uh... Did I sleep long? The day is only starting. It's fine. How do I feel? I mean... Would anybody like to... You know what? I say I need a drink, but I don't... I think I want to keep drinking. I feel like that'd be a bad thing to do. Alright. I would really like to get some answers. How are you alive? Dr. Fuller hasn't reported your disappearance to the Force, but that'll come soon. Bradley? Who else would it be? Mr. Pierce, are you alright? You look like you saw a ghost. I... There are things I can't explain. Tell us. What happened? Okay, well... First off... 
Um, well, I might be on their lead. I saw yeah. people in hoods. They had stolen Mrs. Hawkins' paintings. Who are you talking about? Why would they do such a thing? I don't know, but they were a threat. They've taken over the caves under the mansion. They were performing some kind of ritual. One of the entryways was under Charles Hawkins' office. We suspect Mr. Hawkins of being involved. My patients believe the old islanders used to worship primitive sea gods. Could they be the focus of the cult? Am I hearing this right? So you think me gullible? No, not at all. What else did you uncover, Mr. Not Pierce? Not even looking at each other. Well, first off, uh... I wouldn't call them old sea gods. I'd call them just old gods, period. I have flashbacks. They haunt me. What did they do to you? There was that doctor, Fuller, and a yeah. nurse. Blood everywhere. My legs, the pain, I, I couldn't bear it. I was screaming. They injected me with something. I woke up at the Institute. Bradley was there. And how you scared us. You seemed... demented. You likely woke up during the anesthesia. No wonder those memories haunt you. What in God's name were they doing to you? What happened afterwards? How the fuck was I supposed when to know? I woke know? up the second time, I was in a padded cell. That's where you found me, Doctor. After you released me, I got a good look at what's in store for the patients of the Riverside Institute. Hallucinogenic gas pumped into the cells. An infernal machine. Horrific medical experiments. Impossible. Dr. Fuller would never do such a thing. You should believe it, Ethan. Get a what warrant! What Mr. Pierce saw is precisely what I've been trying to prove. Did you discover anything else? Look at, look at Bradley's face. He's like, oh my god, maybe I'm... Maybe I'm the one on drugs. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, you should be dead. I don't have enough medical for that. You and Dr. Colden. You two know each other pretty well. It's a tiny island. Everyone knows everyone. Especially since I'm a police officer and Marie's a doctor. The chemistry is obvious. I do seem a little bit stupid, don't I? <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the business. Oh, they fucking. Hand. You did see what Charles I'm sure alive. Of now is that the Hawkins case isn't just an accident. And what brings you to that conclusion? The fact that Charles Hawkins survived the fire. I don't understand. Yep. Mr. Hawkins was buried. That's what he you would have, have you that? believe. I have a Nobody. hard time believing you. You, you have a real there, body? Bradley. You even opened fire on him. I'd remember that. Why would he fake his own death? Do you think he covered up his wife's murder? That's possible. It seems hard to swallow. No, I, Don't you have anything more concrete, Pierce? I mean... Yeah, your memory seems to be failing you. Bradley, what do you remember? I don't understand your question. The night we went into the Hawkins mansion, you don't seem to remember the tunnels and what occurred there. Uh, no memory of going down any tunnel. No, we were in the manor then, uh... Then what? I, uh... The rest he, is even quite He doesn't blurry. remember. I don't recall how I came back home. And then? Of course. I went to visit you at the hospital and called on Marie's help to get you released. And you don't remember the events of the tunnel? I don't. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> See that face again. Oh my god, was I really in those tunnels taking LSD? Oh man, I think I really need to lay off the juice. Okay, it's <laughs> to Golden. Uh, did Fuller found Riverside? Given the energy he pours into Riverside, I presume it was Fuller's creation. His father's, to be correct. He was a oh. surgeon on board the Scylla. He founded the hospital in 1904 with funds from the Hawkins family before he died and his son Thomas Fuller took over. Two families. Hawkins and Fuller were so, Most were so good friends. 
Captain Fitzroy's father was also a seaman aboard the Scylla. Powerful families dominating everything. Yes, and as yep. you could tell, Dr. Fuller is like some crazed emperor. He wouldn't be happy if he knew we were snooping around. Do it! I know the risks. I don't fear him. Do you wish to know anything else? Um, Sarah Hawkins was committed, I found you know a that. file bearing Sarah Hawkins' name in the Institute's basement. It makes sense. A powerful family like the Hawkins had the means to hide such a disgrace. But everyone knows the Fullers have been taking care of the Hawkins for at least a generation. And all were aware of Mrs. Hawkins' fragility. Perhaps, but no one would allow a psychiatric internment. From what I read in the file, Fuller used her as a subject of his experiments. Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins, subjects of Dr. Fuller. Why those two? I saw bodies, Dr. Fuller though. Fuller seems to be leaving a trail of corpses. Not to mention those strange machines, chains, and tools of all kind. Yes, I've been telling you that Fuller uses his patients as guinea pigs. What I saw was more akin to torture than medicine. Do you even hear what you're saying? Dr. Fuller is highly respected. It's the truth, Ethan, and I'll prove it to you. I'm listening, Mr. Pierce. Oh, man, I really shouldn't be talking. <laughs> well, I might be I on to a lead. Francis Sanders. Do you know him? She of course. He's a name. patient. Or was. I haven't seen him since Dr. Fuller had him transferred to the basement. Well, he's he been ripped apart. No, Sarah Hawkins. And that's what killed him. What? How did he die? I'm not sure Listen I can explain I... it. Tell me how Mr. Sanders died. He was... Yeah. He called him the Shambler. I didn't see what. But something was there with us. Of what do you speak? Sanders said it was Sarah Hawkins' visitor. He spoke of it like a living being. Sarah Hawkins? Have I missed something here? This makes no sense. I don't see how it can help crack the Hawkins case. You really think she's involved? How could she have murdered Mr. Sanders? Francis Sanders mentioned Mrs. Hawkins just before dying. It's no coincidence. You know, Francis Sanders was a well-known art collector. I guess you can still pay a visit to his wife, Irene Sanders. An art collector, you say? That's probably how they met. If you plan on Obviously. having dinner at the Sanders household, Please spare the widow the tale of her late husband's suffering. I don't agree. She deserves the truth. But that truth may be biased. We don't know the bottom of it. <sighs> You're right. Maybe? Without a plausible explanation for what I saw, let's not jump to conclusions. That seems wise indeed. Very well. I'll go to see Francis's widow. Perhaps I'll find a link between her husband's death and Sarah Hawkins. Don't end up in the hospital this time. <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay, so... Let's see here, what do we got? Uh, I have eight points. Uh, need six. Do that. Then let's do. leave the other points. Shall we? Okay, sanity. Yes, yes. So we know Sanders, he's dead. He was ripped apart. Fuller, he's 52. He's 
right, cock novel. Sellers of the Riverside Institute. All right, and in terms of knowledge, oh, I got this new. Okay. So my sanity is shaken. The ordeals you have gone through have left their mark, but you still manage the best you can. You keep your mind busy in order to chase away doubts and painful memories. You still have some ways to go. Who knows where your mind could lead you along the path of insanity? Oh. Oh dear. Okay, well. Back up the stairs I go. Oh, well, I just, I'm just, just leaving. Pierce, Colton, and Bradley decided to team up to solve the Hawkins case. They have a new trail to follow. Sanders, an art collector and friend of the painter who died right in front of Pierce. This, the detective goes to his house in order to speak with his widow about the shambler that the unfortunate man mentioned before he died. Well, obviously, the shambler is some kind of creature. Of some kind. That's probably what ripped him apart. If not, I don't know, to be honest. But it sounds like some kind of creature from the depths. But she's knocking on the door. What can I do for you, sir? Mrs. Sanders, I'm a private detective. We must talk about your husband and his ties to Sarah Hawkins. Can I come in? You may. However, before we go any further, please know that my husband died yesterday. That is precisely what brings me here. Well, well. Oh Look boy. who's here. The fucking bitch. You know each other. Our paths crossed, briefly. The brave detective has a talent for sticking his nose into my business. I bump into her every time I'm investigating someone's death. It's a small island, detective. My island. It's better that it's you bumping into me. You're investigating Francis' death. Why? Who hired you? I spoke to Francis before he died. His story suggests a link to a case I'm working on. Well, since this business has got nothing to do with me, I'll be in your husband's office, Irene. We'll carry on later. Very well, Miss okay. Baker. This way, Mr. Pierce. And do make yourself comfortable. It would seem that you have much to tell me. May I inquire as to when you had the opportunity to talk to my husband? Yesterday. I met him at the hospital. He spoke to me about Sarah Hawkins. Oh, of course he spoke to you about her. That's all he talked about. Sarah Hawkins and her paintings. Please forgive my tone. The fact <laughs> is that I have not been allowed to see him since he was interned. You, on the other hand, a perfect stranger. We're able to see him and even talk with him the day he died. How was he? Were you present when he had this attack? What happened? Uh, what happened to guilty. your husband is terrible, Mrs. Sanders. But from what I saw, it was inevitable. The man I met yesterday had lost his reason. He suffers no longer if you would allow me such a platitude. Of course. Thank you for your kind words. Nobody You're in welcome. that hospital would have deigned to speak them to me. However, it will require more than that to soothe my mind. I need to understand. How, how could this happen? In a reputed institute? And, and right before your eyes? Did you not do anything to help him? Um... I don't know if 
course it uh, test elephants. It's terrible what happened to your husband, but I had nothing to do with it. I was injured, and I came across him in the hospital quite by chance. Injured? Well, I'm delighted to see you in such fine fettle, Detective. Not everybody enjoyed such a prompt recovery. I suppose Fuller does do miracles now and again. Luck is obviously very kind to you. Oh, I'm tired, Mr. Pierce. I would be grateful if you could tell me what you expect of me, and then leave. Um... Well, how, do you how did Sarah you come Hawkins? to meet Sarah Hawkins? We were the wealthiest and most influential families on Darkwater. Of course we would know each other. And when Charles returned from Europe with his sweet little artist, she and her sinister paintings were destined to catch my husband's eye. He bought many of her works over the last five years. They adorn his macabre gallery. Bob. May Kat I ask you here? what Miss Baker is doing here? How do you know her? My business yeah. with Miss Baker is private, Mr. Pierce. But you do know what kind of business Miss Baker is in, don't you? I am no fool. Please believe that much, at least. Fair enough. Tell me about this shambler. I deduce that your husband already mentioned this dimensional shambler. <laughs> well, you can't imagine that's all he talked about. It's exhibited at the center of the gallery. No better place for the painting that endowed him with the privilege of such a shameful and miserable end to his life. Hold on. Oh dear. The Shambler is a painting by Sarah Hawkins. Who else to paint such horrors? Take a look for yourself, if you feel so inclined. So... It is my only lead at this stage. I suppose I have nothing to lose. Then you have paid no heed. For my part, I refuse to set foot in that gallery again. But if you are so eager to see it... Thank you, Mrs. Sanders. I won't be long. Okay, uh, so it was a painting. Yours? Okay, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and look around, shall we? Um... The day the Shambler came into the Sanders' lives. Oh, look at that. Did she really care for him, after all? Letter of refusal. Dear Madam, I acknowledge receipt of the letter of which you demand the body of your deceased husband. I am sorry to inform you that I cannot agree to return his body to you. At the moment of his internment, you sign a discharge allowing me to dispose of his body as I see fit. I extend my deepest condolences to you, Thomas Fuller. What a dick. Uh, okay, reconstruction. A, a house of artists. A house of artists. A house of artists. That's really all you have to say? Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins were close. Friends, even? Okay. A house of artists. Once again, still... Nothing there. A book. Sanders' accession register. He wrote beside the Shambler. Finally. What did Sarah Hawkins fear so much that she didn't want to sell a painting? Well, maybe because she knew that... Because... Really, like, her paintings are all of this, like... Like, Lovecraftian shit. And obviously, probably some of her paintings contain stuff that could come to he life. finally won. Was Sanders aware of his imminent doom? You can't tell me that you don't think that that fucking thing is gonna... Oh. Oh. You can't tell me you don't think that thing's gonna come out of that painting. He didn't want Sanders to have the painting. She must have felt devastated. She despises Sarah Hawkins, but it's the painting she truly hates. Why? I mean, it's a disturbing painting. Look at it. Ah! Oh. It drove him crazy. Look at that. Oh! The Shambler. Christ. 
I need to see it. I'm gonna take a look around. A Bavaria Medicine Tome 2 from gas gangrene to trench nephritis. Get that medical progression up a little bit. Yeah, so you hated the Shambler, but you also got this painting of you up here, which is pretty fucking scary. Speaking of which, you have another painting of you over here, which is kind of different than that other one, but still just as equally fucking scary. Sonogram? Okay. Oh, let's see. Ooh, that's a painting I wouldn't want to look at either. Why has everybody got shitty artwork? Oh my god, what the fuck is this fucking thing? Give me the lighter. It's locked door. It's also locked. Castle painting. Let's see what this cylinder has to say once it's inserted in the phonograph. Cool. You don't mind? Irene, I made a mistake. I fear that it might be too late for me. Nobody should enter, except to burn everything. I never had the courage. Pay somebody to do it. He's inside my head. I see him behind my eyelids each time I shut my eyes. Did you hear the piano? I can't take any more. I can't hold him back. Forgive me. That accursed gallery. Those accursed paintings. That accursed Sarah. Do you hear the piano? Okay, well. There's some skulls. That's nice. Another locked door. Strange Amerindian pendant. It uh, kind of looks like a dream catcher, just about the weaving in the middle. I could use one of those. Everybody's got the sleeping pills. Strange. For months, Sarah Hawkins refused to part with her painting, to finally give it away for nothing. Dear Francis, I beg you to, for, to give up all hope of ever owning this accursed painting. If our friendship has any meaning for you, please spare me the weight of guilt. I cannot be the architect of your fall. I beg you, my dear friend, forget the shambler, your friend Sarah Hawkins. See, she knew, like, she probably knew that it was, they, like, it came alive. Like, whatever the fuck the shambler is, it was coming from the painting. Well, in the cot, a brief history of dark water. So she probably knew. She she probably knew something about another that. volume of the Reverend's wife's diary. The wife expresses her worries and the strange views of the Reverend's congregation are having since their arrival on the island. 
members of the community, her husband included, begins to their vision as a messenger sent by God. She's scared that they will suffer the same fate as the lost tribe. Oh, yeah. Key to the Sanders Gallery. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. Uh, That's why you you've first. stepped on my toes, Detective. Try not to make oh, a habit sorry. of it. I've got a Maybe lot of shoes. bad habits. Some can be more fatal than others. What have you come looking for in this gallery? I'm going to verify the paintings for a buyer. No, she's not an idiot. Another painting by Sarah Hawkins. One connected to the horrors I've discovered on this island. What a surprise. I'm listening. Miss Sanders, There's more than that, name. Miss Baker. So people have been talking behind my back. I was almost beginning to like you, Mr. Pierce. But it stays cat for you. You knew the Sanders? Irene is a friend of mine. And what and are you, you doing here? What brings you to the Sanders home? I'm here on business. Irene asked me to liquidate all these paintings. She doesn't intend to hang around here for long. Why you? Believe it or not, there aren't many collectors on Darkwater. It needs someone with a network and a means of transport to the mainland. A choice that comes down to Fitzroy and me. And I'm far more pleasant, wouldn't you say? Right this moment, you are? Not now, sweetheart. Uh. I'd like to read this without some snoop looking over my shoulder. Go take a hike, detective. Go take a hike, detective. Bitch. Uh, and a final question. Uh, this is another medical book. Nice. Would you read the book? What? Is, what is it? I mean, I guess I will. I've made a bad choice. <laughs> oh, I got an achievement. Beyond reality. Except to read an unholy book. The kind of encyclopedia of monstrous and unknown creatures I'm beginning to believe that they exist. Well, it's not the Necronomicon. What does it say? Malus Bestiarium. Well... Help. My sanity is still shaking. Hey, man. Oh, my medicine's gone up to three now. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so what else do we have? We have... Well, we know Irene Sanders, she's 41. We have the Beastarium. The Beastarium. Men will gather the knowledge through the lines dedicated to me by the Great Old Ones, but also in other volumes. The visions that assail me whisper, whisper me names and silhouettes of mystical creatures. Soon the Malice uh, Monstorium. Monstro Monstrum. Repository of all anatomical, cosmic, and dimensional knowledge will be seen as the authoritative work. This book, unholy among the most cursed books, cursed books, will one day be the final rampart between man and the predators that are waiting to devour him, hidden behind the veils of parallel dimensions. Sure. Oh, so the, so yeah. See, there's the Shambler. There it is. The Mitchell Shambler comes from a dark and inhospitable dimension where the rarity of food sources keeps it in a state of permanent starvation. Uh, that actually sounds kind of like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. This is why it is in a constant state of readiness to travel to other dimensions or to feed on its inhabitants. It basically is. Make sure you never weaken the veils of your dimension, otherwise you should risk attracting this very dangerous creature. Should this happen, you just have to lay eyes upon it for it to 
for its being to anchor itself in your dimension and to allow it to rip you open with its claws. Yeah, that's basically kind of like the... Um, that's basically like the Demogorgon from um, Stranger Things. It doesn't have a lot of food, so it kind of goes to other dimensions. Okay, well here we are. Got some weird ass tablets. Oh, look at these. Oh, they're sphinxes, but they got like human skulls. These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. Apparently. Okay. Oh, there it is. Over there. I think that's the last thing I want to look at. Got a lot of really fucked up art. Cerberus, well, some of which the I like. The public actually. entrance to the gallery. I kind of like some of this art. You can dig it. Boy, Charles Hawkins. Oh, I got some oil for the lamp. There's different knives and all these things. Why was he so interested in old weapons? Probably so he could keep whatever. Uh... The man transforms an entire wing of his manor into an art gallery. He's probably so interested in old weapons so that if there's anything that came from these dimensions and shit, like the Shambler, he could maybe fight them off. More oil. Seriously, nothing else? Well, I want to know what, what do I do if I fucking get this and... Is this dagger favorite. part of Sanders' collection, or was he seeking to acquire it? Oh, I saw that. That was the one that we looked at. Uh, far from possessing the talents of Sarah Hawkins, Sanders drew a dagger with tortured form down the smallest detail. The guard carries a strange esoteric symbol as a recurring feature of his correspondence with Sarah. Yeah, this dagger was this one over here. Hi, bud. This one right here. Hi. Okay, well, fuck it. It's gonna just come out of the fucking painting. How many eyes? So. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so I was assuming we have to go get that other that dagger. What the hell was that? Stab the painting? A lot of times that's what you do. You sure you won't be needing that hand? You're losing it, detective. At this rate, you're right. The oh. bottle will get oh, you before I do. You didn't see anything. I saw you within no. an inch of putting a dagger through your forearm. Did I miss something more interesting? Uh, uh the painting was cursed. Sanders was right. This painting is cursed. What are you talking about? I was attacked by a creature. Pushed it back, I think. I... I think so, too. You believe me? You knew. You knew about the beast. What are you talking about? Think yourself lucky that I saved your hand, even if it was to save my goods. You mean me. Don't flatter yourself, sweetheart. I'm talking about the contents of this gallery. And by the way... Where do you think you're going with that dagger? It saved my life. It's an extraordinary dagger. You should talk to Algernon Drake. He's an antique dealer here on Darkwater. He'll tell you all about it. From what I saw in the ledgers, it was him who sold it to Sanders. This symbol on the dagger, it was all over Sanders' cell. It's what protected him. It's what protected me, too. This antique dealer has a good knowledge of the occult. I have nothing to lose by meeting him. You've got your spunk back. Go where you want. I'm staying here to talk business with Irene. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, bye. Stomach. Okay. <laughs> the Shambler turned out to be much more artwork painted by Sarah Hawkins. As I said, as a huge creature came out of the painting to attack Pierce after a hard fight. Actually, it was a very easy fight. Detective managed to send it back to the painting. He later discovered that the dagger he used to repel the creature had been sold to Sanders by a man named Algernon Drake. Owner of the Nameless Bookstore, Pierce decided to pay the library a visit. What? <laughs> This game's kind of weird. It's like, this guy has a knowledge of the occult. Well, if this guy has a library, then this guy has the Necronomicon. More than likely. Probably around here somewhere. There's got to be a Necronomicon around here somewhere. Right. 
Where is the bookseller? I don't care. Freud's The Interpretation of Dreams. It's the work that laid the foundations of psychoanalysis at the beginning of this century. Indeed. Medical. So, okay, so sanity. Is my sanity going even further? I met the Shambler. Uh, how many skill points do I have? I got five now. Alright, so let's do... Let's do investigation. Let's go ahead and validate that. Okay, well we know the Sanders residence. The occult, this dagger. Dagger of the Ancients. Exceptional dagger of Ottoman origin probably dates from the 16th century. It bears the elder sign on its hilt. It apparently belonged to Pargali Ibrahim Pasha, Grand Vizier at the court of the Suleiman the Magnificent. Legend tells that Pargali used a symbol in the dagger to protect the court from a creature that haunted the mirrors of the palace. What is certain is that Suleiman had his vizier executed. Did he fear him after this demonstration of power? Okay. Painting of the Shambler. Well, there we go. We're in chapter 7, apparently. Just... All right. Well, if this guy owns a library, he's probably got a Necronomicon around or something. Darkwater History Volume 2. Another volume of the Reverend's wife's diary. The pastor declared himself to be the prophet. He renounced God and worship a strange pagan uh, entity with a monstrous appearance. His wife tried to reason with her husband, but in vain. He was convinced that he must listen to the voice in his head because it holds the truth. Volume 4! Chess game! The creepy green lan lantern oil. I bet that shit, I bet it's like, uh, I bet the lamp oil and everything is like, came from like a, a uh, like a, well, they call it the, the, the like the, what do they call it? The fucking well they caught or whatever? Knowledge. Clues? What is the miraculous catch? That's what it's called. Maybe this miraculous catch, like, was cursed or something? Maybe that's where all this weird green oil comes from? Medicine. Come on. 
The Book of Zion is the foundational work behind Helena Blavatsky's theosophical movement. Its followers place truth on the same footing as a religion. Cultism. Going up. Drawing. What's this? Uh, it's another. It's gonna be another what bad book. What does this book, strange huh? book yep. contain? This book contains unholy knowledge. Yeah, look, it's the Shambler right there. Collection catalogs of classified creatures that I had never heard of. Divinities from the stars, creatures capable of traveling from one dimension to another. It presents itself as a reference work on the bestiary of the myth, without giving detail on the mythology to which it refers. The pages are covered with phantasmagorical illustrations. I like it. It's another one of the beasti it's it's another one of the beastariums. That increases our cold. Of course I want to read those. It increases the occult. More medicine. That for me is what makes it all worth it. See, because you increase your you increase the cultism, see, and that's going up. Same thing with the medical, you know, like the occultism you you can't put skill points into. So you need to rely on on reading books and stuff. Okay, let's what go happened back. here? Oh. Reconstruction. Is there anything I can find first? Oh, there's a safe. More medicine. Let's start over. Bookstore. Where did they break in from? Blood. Seems like amateur work. Okay, so they break in here. Someone tall left this footprint. A man, probably. This burglar seems to be rather clumsy. True. What's over here? Going through here. What killed all these animals? Animals? I can't even tell what they what are. What sort of thief leaves his tools at the crime scene? What happened that made the burglar flee before finishing his work? Now, of course, it has that star on it. Oh, dear. What the... Charles Hawkins? Looks like the symbol rejected Hawkins. What sort of power did Sarah Hawkins' painting possess? Oh, that's the Necronomicon, I'm telling you. Sarah Hawkins helped hide something in this safe. She put a book in a safe, dude. It's gotta be the Necronomicon. Drake put in a great deal of effort to hide whatever is in here. Everything is linked to the Sarah Hawkins case. That's that. Okay, right, so we know. Drake left instructions on how to find the combination of his safe. Okay, a page used to be hidden here. It is possible to read. If somebody finds the, uh, these memoirs, there will be no doubt that I'm in serious trouble. My last only hope is that my body and bones are still in the place of reality in order that they be recovered and burned. The funeral urn must be given to my dear mother if she is still of this world. 
The following message is of capital importance. Whoever reads these lines and demonstrates acuity as sharp as mine can hope to gain access to my most precious possession. It lies within my safe, and the clues to the combination are to be found in three cylinders, each hidden where life and study uh, combine in the Greek world. Each cylinder is numbered, even if, as the celebrate author says, order is in the pleasure of reason, but disorder is the delight of the imagination. Indeed, despite my, pre my preference for organized chaos, I must admit that reason usually prevails in the end. If by chance a person, or should I say a genius, was to match my intellect and find the combination of the safe, I would ask that they deliver its contents in the safekeeping of my friend and colleague, Professor Armitage of uh, Miskatonic University. The content of this safe is not only a vast digest of knowledge, but also a weapon that is far too dangerous for it to fall into the wrong hands. Oh, it's totally necron. I hope that it, you will be able to appreciate the danger that this represents and that you will uh, act accordingly. In any event, I will neither be there to guide you nor to suffer from your actions. Oh, yeah. There's a... That's, that's the Necronomicon. A strange amulet. I have a feeling I'd better not touch it. You already have, bro. The Hound. Okay, so there are three cylinders, and they're each numbered. So, so his thing... Bookstore, occult, hound. Do not, mis do not make the mistake of taking this jewel for an inanimate object. The soul of a powerful sorcerer, devourer of bodies, laying cold. A sect from Central Asia lives in this jade amulet. Yeah, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have picked that up. Oh, I was gonna go over to the clues. Oh, I guess I'm gonna go to the inventory. Okay, so um. Where life and study combine in the Greek world. Life and study. Oh. What uh, link did he find between Charles Hawkins and an old amulet? Oh, shit. Key of Raleigh. This key that bears the elder sign is the only one able to protect your psyche. It is in the form of a cylindrical medallion hanging at the end of a heavy chain. Hundreds of years ago, the star and the branch whose purpose it is to push back the forces of the Great Old Ones were engraved in its center. Everything points to it being Charles Hawkins, a tort from its last owner, an Egyptian antique dealer. In press cuttings that mention the misdemeanor, the date of the robbery coincides with the last of Hawkins' trip to Cairo. It remains to be seen whether he knows of the true purpose of the artifact. Try to find it. Is everyone on this island taking sleeping pills? Apparently. Okay, so... Yeah, so there's some cylinders hidden around. We gotta find them. Arkham Editions? Never heard of them. Uh, okay. How many volumes are there in this collection? Volume one. Or Linda. Another volume by Arkham Editions. Volume two. Corpus. Arkham Editions. Never heard of them. Things that should not be. Just the thing that should not be. How many volumes are there in this collection? That's two. Another volume by Arkham Editions. Masa di Requiem per Shugai. Shugai. That's four. That's Arkham nine. Editions. Never heard of them. Azathoth and Other Horrors. Also known as the Nightmare Lyrics, this collection of poems was sensationally received when first published in 1908. Ooh, boy. How many volumes are there in this collection? Say, the, so the Masa Deeper Collection. 
Another volume by Arkham Editions. Six of Prophecies. Arkham Editions? I Never heard of them. Seven. Seven, eight, nine, eight. How many volumes are there in this collection? Six, seven. Another volume by Arkham Editions. Or the Key of Solomon. Okay. Okay. I feel like there's one in here. Things are not looking good. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the White Queen is surrounded. Um. Can I play chess? Things are not looking good. So confused. Kind of chalice. This goblet seems to be very ancient. It seems to be made of gold, darker with real precious stones. Do the rubies and sapphires make up a more specific motif? Okay. to hide. I should perhaps listen to them. Wait a sec. Hold on, where's that clue? Life and study. Biology? Mythology? Or life and study meet? Here? Biology, biology, study. Maybe that's it? I don't know. Uh, anyway, we found it. That's nice. Alright, well, we have this, so. Alright, should we? Let's play the first one. Red rocks, like precious stones, lie fixed, set in divine gold. To be the guardian of the Grail does not protect me from its attractions, Henry. And I do confess it. I am willing to pay to know its secrets. Okay, well that makes sense. This goblet. The chalice of knowledge. Yeah. So the red ones. This is one. So the first one will be by the cracks. So one, two, three, four. Five. So there's five red ones. So five is a. Uh, hopefully. I finally understood that we were only pieces on the chessboard of the gods. Let those of us who are still standing protect our white queen from their dark soldiers. I see our number dwindling, and my will strengthens as my apprehension grows. We shall refuse to be the playthings of destiny. So maybe how many white pieces there are? One, two, three, four. The queen four. has little protection. So five and four, five, four. Dear friend, I thank you again for the anthology of the works of Arkham editions that you sent me. Uh, volume nine, Azathoth and other horrors, seemed particularly relevant to my research. I never tire of browsing through them. Five, four, nine, perhaps? Shall we try that? Five, four, nine. Let's try it.
Five. About four or five nine. Volume nine. So these are the roll. volumes that Drake was talking about in his message. Eighteen? Eighteen years old? One of them has to be five. Maybe seven. The queen has little here. protection. Let's try five. S well, queen has a little protection, so so maybe three. How about let's try. Five. I think the first one's got to definitely be five. Let's do three. Nine. Hey! Yep, Necronomicon. There's three. There were three white pieces that were protecting the queen. I was guessing that's what had, that's what had to be. Oh yeah, Reed, this is not a great idea. You thought your sanity was failing you then. You didn't open this bitch up. Yo, you better stop staring at that. Oh no. Yep. Yep. Fucked up, bro. You done open the Necronomicon. Now look at Oh shit. You can see a bunch of you can see all the people. In the nameless bookstore, Pierce traced the trail of the attempted burglary. He discovered that Charles Hawkins was behind the attempt. Pierce opened the bookseller's safe to find what the latter and Sarah Hawkins uh, what the latter and Sarah Hawkins had hidden there. What covered in human skin lied inside, irresistibly attracted the detective when he opened it. His mind was projected into another body. That's what happened? Is that why we're at the Riverside Institute? What's going on? Chapter 8! What the hell? So that's what happened? I'm, I'm, I've now been astral, astral projected into another body? Am I? Who am I? Who am I? Take forever to load. Well, anyway, we're gonna we're actually gonna call it there for today. Um, so yeah, uh, you're gonna see next time who uh, who we are. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all on the next part. And goodbye.